Oh, about uh, 26 degrees out right now. We're gonna see how this bad boy fires up. Oh. We have battery connection, it's hand tight. Hopefully this battery ain't going dead. All right, I got a new one over there. I need to go grab it and put it in. I'd rather do it closer to the shop. Oh, yeah. She dead. All right. Swap batteries. So, got her disconnected. Good, uh... Oh, e. it's now clean. Connect her out. How are you secured? Uh, one there, one there. It's like we're, uh, we're gonna do something different with this. I'm pretty sure this thing was supposed to have two batteries. And we're just gonna throw one in it. Um, see, it's starting on fine. But uh, we're gonna dress that. We gotta make a new step cover. I mean, this this box seems pretty decent. All things for a later date. Let's get this battery swapped out. Well, with anything, that ain't gonna work out how, how I hoped. I actually gonna have to pull that box out now because it's too high and uh positive being on this side it's gonna hit this and positive to ground straight to the battery is uh no bueno so uh, i go grab the angle grinder because you know it's just easier to grab that so trying to find the right size bolts and try and get it out and with everything on this truck she's a little crusty um, i think that's supposed to be a mounting hole. Ah, let's see here. Yeah, one over there. I guess I'm not entirely sure. Oh, because they welded it. So we're uh, ankle grinding it regardless. Maybe even saw saw. Let's uh, let's see what we can do here. So, uh, the story on this truck is a, it's a junkyard truck. It's a 2000 Chevy uh, C6500. Um, it was owned by a junkyard. I don't know when they purchased it. I worked there from uh, 2010 to 2011. Um, it had two batteries when I was working there. Um, this was added at some point. Obviously, I believe it's just a regular car battery box that they welded on, as we can see, um, as well as uh, the PTO was where it was supposed to be, instead of being a manual shift boot, or sh shifter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it was modified at some point. Um, the gentleman that purchased this from the junkyard when they shut down, um, he really didn't touch a whole lot of this. He just, they just kind of ran it. I uh, used it to pick up stuff, move stuff around, um, didn't get a whole lot of use or abuse while they owned it. And then uh, it had the fuel issues and that's when uh, it sat. And that was in 2020 was the last time it was registered. And it sat there. Um, and then we struck a deal here a month ago or so brought it home got it tagged and so I'm gonna try to make this thing kind of a decent runner that I can use haul my junk around and, uh, make it nice again as uh, I can haul my mud truck and my camper at the same time with this thing which would be really really sweet so uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this in there which is up here as if I can so I uh, brought the old saws all and we're gonna Let's see what we can do.
That ain't gonna work. See if that'll do much better now we just got that guy there it's gonna be that one right there maybe we will just go get that's a 10 10 or 12 but uh light i'm using is this uh bad dog tools it's supposed to you know, last forever lifetime warranty you can grind with it, you can cut with it. Um, had it for a couple of months and absolutely abuse the crap out of it. And uh, instead of being afraid that it's going to blow up in your face, you can kind of abuse it and it uh, just keeps going. And uh, I'm just really impressed. I should be, it's like $200. But uh, then I guess if it does explode, because it is metal um it may hurt a bit more than your fiber disc but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so uh yeah i'm gonna go grab uh grab a 10 and a 12 and we're gonna see if we can't get this cross this bad boy off and get that battery in there of course it's always gonna fall uh, farther than just being able to easily reach it So my biggest qualm with uh, this thing is uh, being flat. As a grinding disc, you end up not being able to get much of an angle, uh, so she'll eat pretty good. Um, they do sell a cupped version, which brings it out a little bit farther. Um, had I known that at the beginning, I would have bought just one of those. But uh, I bought this one, so uh, I will be ordering one of those cupped ones because. I actually really enjoy this thing. Um, so we're just going to grind these down quick. And then uh, throw that battery in there and see if this bad boy will fire up. Which it should. By the way, I don't need to be cutting cables today. Nice and open. Slide this bad boy in here. Cable somewhere. Dry. What else you get sideways? Sideways we want. See that? Always make sure your batteries have go handles. Makes life so much better. Oh. Good enough. 
Or no, it ain't going down the road yet. I'll make something more permanent at some point. Okay, grab some tools. Those out of here. Well, let's use the start. Not a whole lot of that battery box left. And this all kind of for not, just as with pretty much every day. I have free. Ah, the ADD takes over, and I never. Oh. Do I actually have to tighten that? Let's just hope this Walmart battery wasn't dead on the shelf. That would be annoying. There we go. Not a frickin' problem. <laughs> For the oil's pressures to come up. up here in about 10 seconds. A little longer, but she made it. Voltage. Until she's getting fuel because that's actually working as soon as we put any amount of fuel in it it just says all the way full so we at least get a little bit of a warning when it's low let's see there's no ketchup on here but that's the ketchup all right, pull her up by the shop, put some fuel in it. Hope I don't lose that truck. It'll be fine.
fixing itself, which would be awesome. Put some of the ACs on, so we're gonna turn that off. Much better. Let's see what that fuel gauge does all the way to the left. Actually went down, so maybe it's working. No, well, we'll find out. We'll go get five more gallons for it at some point. Fill her up, come see what happens. Should have about 10 gallons in it now. I believe it's a 35 gallon tank. junk all the time like I do get you a shorty hammer like that and buy your lubricant by the case I always get distracted. But what we're dealing with is uh, these are supposed to move uh, and they don't. I'm assuming from sitting. Um, last owner, I don't think used the wheel lift a whole lot. Understandably so. Um, not often when you're not hauling stuff, cars for other people that uh, you need to haul too. But, uh, like the ability to, so I have, uh, have a plan for it. So I kind of need them free, and it's relatively nice out. Yeah, should be able to get get her free and get her usable.
just look at that. It's uh, she must have been leaning this way. Cause uh, this side. Not nearly as bad. That's pretty cruddy. This guy was froze up, unfortunately. And uh, so it's a twist. So you pull it out and it holds the pin out for the hell arm. And then you twist it in and it sets flat. Like that guy. And me being the brilliant person I am, I was just kind of tapping her after we've lubed her. And uh, she broke off, so that'd be something I need to address. I'm pretty sure you can rebuild these. So, one more thing to fix. It's fine. Again, it's not going up in the road. She's just going to be back and forth around here, so put in the door panel. If I can't, I will just re-weld it on there and hope for the best. But we're going to goop her up some more, slide her in and out, and call it good. That's about all we can do for now. Now the free. Oh, sort of memory cards. We will start playing again. 